What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. Among the many different catch em alls I've done for the Pokemon series, they've all been the same concept, playing each of the games and trying to collect the most recent Pokemon from each generation. While all of you really like those, I think it's time to go outside the boundaries a little bit. Today we're going to find out how easy you can catch every Johto Pokemon in Pokemon Red and Blue. Now, I can imagine that an overwhelming majority of you are extremely skeptical and are assuming this is just blatant clickbait, but without trying to spoil too much this early on, this is definitely possible. But let's take a few steps back and cover some important information before we figure out how to complete such a strange challenge. Now, usually the catch-em-all videos I do on the channel have a specific format, and this is around the point where I start talking about the rules and the difficult tasks that have to be completed. But as you can probably tell, this is pretty different than anything we've taken on up until this point. Literally anyone who's played or even heard of Pokemon Red and Blue knows how many Pokemon are available in the game. 151. I mean, they're literally called the original 151, so wouldn't this be kind of a shocking revelation to find out that another 100 Pokemon are magically available in the game? So when I say that they're in the game, all of their movesets, sprites, and stats aren't available. This kind of stuff would have been discovered years ago, or even more recently with the leaks that have been going on, but they're definitely in the game. We just need to put a little extra work to get them to show up. Before we get into anything, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content in the future. This video took a ton of effort to put together, so it'd mean a lot if you would, but aside from that, let's just jump right into it. Another very common piece of knowledge that just kind of comes with playing the original Gen 1 games involves a specific special Pokemon as well as a well-known trick, the Mew Glitch. This is an oversight that's most commonly done at the Nugget Bridge. You walk down to this trainer while holding Start, teleport away to Cerulean City and walk up north, Fight this trainer with a slowpoke, teleport back, and head to the bridge. If done correctly, your start menu will magically appear and then you're forced into an encounter with the otherwise unobtainable Mew. This specific process has been done probably hundreds of thousands of times. But does anyone actually know why the game does this? Why do we have to specifically fight a slowpoke in order to make this work? This specific trainer's slowpoke on Route 25 always has the same stats whenever you battle it, and this also applies to every other trainer's Pokemon in the game. While you do have to get into a battle to fix the fact that you can't open your menu because the game assumes that you're already in a battle, the reason Mew appears at the start of Nugget Bridge is because of one special piece of information. Slowpoke Special Stat This Pokemon has a special stat of 21, which is coincidentally the same value as Mew's index number in the game's code. When the game tries to force an encounter at the bridge, it will generate a Pokemon based on the special stat of the last fought Pokemon, in this case 21, resulting in a Mew. As quite a few of you know, this means that if you encounter other trainers, or even wild Pokemon on these routes, you can encounter completely different Pokemon than Mew due to the fact that there's an extremely strong chance that their special stats are completely different. While this is all well and good, what does this have to do with catching Johto Pokemon? Without boring you to death with technical terms, some games store individual values of things like how much stamina you have in RPGs, a specific amount of an item that you're holding, or even what area on the map you're located in a single bite. These bytes hold values from 0 to 256, and having anything higher than that would require two or more bytes, requiring more space. This is especially important to older games as they have less space on their devices. Because of this, developers of the old games reuse the same sections of memory for multiple things to save space. In Pokemon Red and Blue, they use the same section of memory for both creating the battle and fighting in the battle. This is usually never a problem, except when performing the Mew Glitch. In this case, the battle data becomes the creation data, or in more layman's terms, the bite used for the special stat of the last encounter is the Pokemon being created now. I know none of this really makes sense, but just bear with me. These bites can hold values between 0 and 256, and this means that technically there should be 256 Pokemon. But because there are only 151 Pokemon in Gen 1, there are 105 values to spare. Which, as long as our special stat is high enough, it can all be accessed with the Mew Glitch. A good chunk of these empty spaces are reused as trainer rosters that can be used to fight people like Lance, Giovanni, or even the hidden Professor Oak battle. But in between, there are some hidden gems. If we take a look at this index table for all the Pokemon, you can see that all the original 151 Pokemon are available right at the beginning with Rhydon, and end all the way at the index number 190 with Victory Bell. But wait, there are 150, so what are the other 40? The remaining slots are all filled with missing though. You know the Pokemon that you encounter at Cinnabar after talking to the old man. These are all incomplete data entries that can still be encountered through the Mew Glitch that I mentioned earlier. And because Gold and Silver use the same index list, when you transfer them to the next game, they, in theory, become whatever Pokemon is supposed to be associated with that number. This means that if we encounter a Pokemon with a special of 86, we can catch Delibird, 50 for Heracross, 31 for Scizor, and so on. But as you know, that still means there are 60 Jota Pokemon that aren't accounted for. So where are they? Well, I mentioned that the list for the Kanto Pokemon stops at 190, but the other slots leading up to Index 255 still produce an encounter. They're just... 
different. The first 190 Pokemon within the Index are the most stable, which means that they probably intended on having more than 151 Pokemon in the game, but they just couldn't fit them in or had time restraints. Anything following Index 190, as well as Index 0, is just a collection of garbage data, and if you've encountered one of these Pokemon before, it's a very unique experience. Out of all the Pokemon in the game, these are the most dangerous, as encountering them may not all be that bad, but attempting to get them in your possession may cause damage to the game, but we'll focus more on that later. Okay, so how in the world can we get any of the hidden Johto Pokemon? The main 190 Pokemon are relatively easy to encounter, due to the fact that nearly every trainer in the game has a special around that range. But what about anything after 190? I mean, the legendary birds you encounter don't even have a special stat even close to 250, so what trainer has a Pokemon that's even close to that kind of power? And the answer is there isn't. Aside from maybe Gary's Alakazam, there aren't many Pokemon that can get you to that range, and considering that the glitch is based off of the last Pokemon you fought, that wouldn't even be possible anyways. Thankfully, there is an extension to the Mew glitch that will make this more possible. If we go about doing the glitch as we normally would, and fix our menu by taking on a trainer, we're free to head wherever we want, so long as we don't cross into the border, connecting us to the route where we did what I'll now call by its proper name, the Trainer Fly Glitch. This means if we encounter any Pokemon in the wild, and then head to that route, we can encounter whatever special stat that Pokemon had. Because the trainer's Pokemon in this game don't have a special stat that close, we're obviously not going to find a wild Pokemon with specials that high. But there is one Pokemon that can help us. Ditto. While this Pokemon isn't very strong, one feature of Ditto in the Generation 1 games is that when it uses the move Transform, it not only copies the Pokemon and moves, but it also copies the Pokemon's stats. This means that not only can we use our own special stats to get encounters over 190, we can also even guarantee the Pokemon we want if we plan ahead enough. After figuring this out, I performed the glitch again and took Articuno with a special stat of 192 into a Ditto battle. Because I started the Trainer Fly glitch on Route 7, I flew back to Lavender Town, and believe it or not, I encountered a Wild Bayleaf. It may not look like it, but it's in there. Uh, somewhere. After catching the glitch Pokemon, if you check its stats, you can see it's actually a Water type, and its moveset is a complete mess. But based on the Gen 2 Index, it's technically a Bayleaf. From here, I immediately went to try and trade this monster to my other copy of Crystal, but I noticed a couple things during this process. In the trading menu, the whole thing was bugged because of the length of my Pokemon's original name, and although the trade could be accepted on my side, in Crystal it kept saying, the Bayleaf you chose from Red appears to be abnormal. On Crystal's side of the trade, if you look at the summary of the glitch Pokemon, it appears as a completely normal Bayleaf. No sprite errors, moveset looks fine, and everything else seems to be in order. But unfortunately, the outside of the game can see all the garbage surrounding it. Now this is obviously not a surprise because it's pretty hard to prove this is a normal Bayleaf, but at this point I had no idea what they meant by abnormal. So I did a little bit of research and this is what I came up with. In order to prevent glitch Pokemon from flooding into Gen 2 and potentially damaging that game as well, Game Freak created a Pokemon check in the same way that Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home ensure things like Spiritomb with Wonder Guard and a level 140 Arceus doesn't get passed onto the next game. There are a few checks that the game makes, like ensuring that the Pokemon isn't over level 100, but the most standout thing that I noticed was the fact that the Pokemon won't trade if the Pokemon's type is incorrect. The only Pokemon that's actually exempt from this is the Magmite line, because their type changes in Gen 2, but everything else is completely off the table. So at this point, I just kinda assumed it wasn't possible because Bayleaf will always be a water type when I encounter it, but after spending a bit of time researching, I found something interesting. In the Glitch City Laboratories forum, I found a user who claimed they were able to change the Pokemon's typing in the game with the usage of an item called 8F. And yes, that's the 8th floor. As you can imagine, 8F is an item that you can obtain through some crazy glitches that lets you not only change your Pokemon's typing, but basically completely rework any aspect of the game. The proper term for this is Arbitrary Code Execution, or ACE for short. If you've seen the video where I beat the gyms in Pokemon Red and Blue in reverse, this is generally the same concept, but with the item 8F we have full control, so long as we know how to use it. The process of obtaining this item is actually pretty simple, but without killing you with technical jargon, you basically give yourself 255 of an item, so the game assumes that it's a cancel button, and then you go under your bag and retrieve the item in the middle of Celadon City. This process takes all of maybe 10 minutes to set up, but this is the point in the challenge where things get kind of dangerous. Because the item 8F has a lot of potential to rewrite portions of the game's programming, there's a very high chance that if you even make one small mistake, you'll completely lose your save file. I want to preface this beforehand because I know some of you try the videos that I make, so if you do this stuff I include in the description, there's a solid chance you'll completely erase all of your data. So now that we have the item, how can we use this to change the typing? When you use the item 8F, the game will execute the data of your Pokemon in your party as code. 
Because this isn't really practical because your Pokemon can level up and change stats pretty easily, we set the code inside these Pokemon that it will redirect it to use our bag instead, which is much more simple to manage. By having a specific set of items and Pokemon with specific stats, we can essentially write out a line of code and use ADAF to execute whatever we'd like it to do. Think of the ADAF as a button, and our party and bag as an action replay code. Once we push the button, the game will do whatever the code is supposed to do. For this game, there isn't one single setup that you have to use, and there are actually multiple different party and bag layouts depending on what you want to use it for. The process of changing a Pokemon's typing is actually pretty straightforward, as the items aren't very difficult to obtain. And although you do need tons of each item, like 218 Carbos, you can just use the missing known glitch to duplicate items, which you're going to need to do anyways considering that you can't normally have more than 99 items on a single stack. After setting up the box layout, I went out to grab another glitch Pokemon because I released Bayleaf from earlier, and because my Articuno gained some special stats during this whole experiment, I ended up encountering a Croconaw instead. After catching it and looking at its stats, I noticed one glaringly large problem. It's water fighting. Because Croconaw is only a water type, how in the world can I remove a second typing from a Pokemon? I searched online for a while and came up with basically nothing because I'm the only person who cared enough to want to do this, but I tried to trade it anyways to see if maybe it would only account for its primary typing. And to no surprise, that didn't trade either. Just because I didn't want to severely ruin my Croconaw, I decided to just do a test run with a Venomoth and used ADAF to change it to a fighting type. Upon checking its stats, nothing changed, it's still Bug Poison. So after completely failing every attempt and spending a day looking around, I remember that the Bayleaf that I caught at the beginning of the experiment was a pure water type. Maybe if I can't trade dual types, at least mono types can bypass the Gen 2 check? I went through the process of catching a Bayleaf again and used the code to change it to a grass type. Although it still said it was a water type, I refused to believe that nothing happened, so I took it into battle to see if there were any differences. After taking on an Oddish, it used Absorb, and... Wait, it's not effective. So that means it did work. Bayleaf is actually a grass type. So although the game doesn't show that it's no longer a water type, the deep internals of the game knows what typing it actually is. I immediately went to the Pokemon Center and tried to trade it, but once again Crystal refuses to trade the Pokemon. I then leveled it up to a legitimate level and replaced all of its glitch moves with ones that actually learns in Gen 2 games, and... Nothing. All this work, and still... Nothing. At this point, I had basically given up because there was literally nothing that was working. So I just figured that while you can catch every Johto Pokemon in Red and Blue, you can't transfer them to newer games. As a last ditch effort, I reached out to the most big brain Pokemon gamer that I know that could help me with this challenge. Retire. You might recognize him from the glitch videos I did for Diamond and Pearl at the start of my channel, and while he doesn't specialize in Gen 1 glitches and mechanics, he at least knows some people that do. After going back and forth with him about all the things that I've done, he realizes one thing that might make a difference. Dual monotypes. Now I know that that term makes no sense, but from how he explained it, the game gives all the Pokemon two typings, regardless if the Pokemon actually has two different kinds. For example, if one Pokemon is a fire type, it's technically a fire fire typing. This means that although I did change the primary typing of Bayleaf to Grass, it's technically a Grass Water type. A Dinosaur Ludicolo, if you will. So with a small adjustment to the setup, I changed its invisible secondary typing to Grass, and... It worked. I actually traded a Bayleaf from Pokemon Red to Pokemon Crystal. If you check out it in-game, it looks perfectly normal and plays just like how a normal Bayleaf would. So there you have it. It's possible. But what does it take to get all 100 Johto Pokemon? So when it comes to catching the rest, there are a few more issues, or I guess obstacles, that we have to address, starting with actually encountering all the Pokemon. Now, when I encountered the Bayleaf on my first attempt, that was conveniently a good special stat. Many of the other garbage Pokemon past Index 190 are a disaster to catch. Most of the encounters like Meganium and Typhlosion have this result. So doing a trial and error for every Pokemon to see if you can even catch it is not only tedious, but also a big waste of time considering that you're going to need to have a collection of Pokemon, with special stats covering 191 through 250, also including the ones mixed in with the original 151. Thankfully with the power of Ace and the ADF glitch, I was able to set up a code that just gives me the Pokemon instead. This process is still pretty tedious considering that you can only have 5 required Pokemon in your party when you use ADAF or the game will corrupt your save file, but you can just deposit them over and over until you have every Pokemon in the game. That however is the least of your worries. After you've collected all the Pokemon, you need to change all their typings. 
This means you have to run the 8F script 200 times to get every individual Pokemon, which means you'll also have to deal with moving Pokemon around because it only works on the first Pokemon in the current box that you're in. You're also going to want to group all the Pokemon with similar typings so you don't have to reduplicate your items a billion times, and on top of that you have to pray that you don't completely wipe your save file in this very specific process. As you can tell by my tone, this is a really stupid idea considering that one single mistake will probably make you start from square one, but if you follow the proper steps, you can definitely obtain every single Pokemon from the Johto region. Except for one. Out of all the Pokemon that can't be collected through any means, this one is unfortunately the most desirable one out of the bunch. Celebi. Now I know that some of you are probably confused. If a bite holds data from 0 to 256 and you only go up to 250, why can't you generate the 251st Pokemon in the index? Wouldn't that essentially give you the Pokemon? And in theory, this is definitely true because they share the same index number, but through trading it through the time capsule, the game recognizes it as nothing. I wish I had an explanation and normally I would attempt to get one, but considering the impact this could have if I attempted to get one through 8F, it's probably not worth destroying my save file. To be fair, if you really wanted a Celebi, you could get one in the Virtual Console version of Crystal or just through other Gen 2 glitches, but at the end of the day, you can only get all but one of the Johto Pokemon in red and blue. Although I make this thing sound like a complete disaster and an absurd task, there are actually some really safe Pokemon that you can catch that don't take a ton of effort to transfer. See, when you receive your glitch Pokemon, the game associates the data with some of the Pokemon that are already in the game. Take for example Bayleaf, that's actually Poliwhirl, and coincidentally the Croconaw I caught was Poliwrath due to their placement on the index list, which explains why it was water fighting. With this in mind, there are some glitch Pokemon that when you catch them, they'll have the exact typing of the Pokemon they're supposed to be, which means that all you have to do is the Ditto glitch and it's ready to trade. These 8 Pokemon can all be transferable through catching their glitch variants, which is nearly a tenth of the decks before evolving or breeding any of them. Granted, the only really interesting one here is Totodile, but if you couldn't tell by now, this video is more about realizing the concept rather than finding any use of doing something like this in the first place. Overall, although this was a pretty frustrating thing to complete because this information was scattered all over the internet, the fact that I was even able to make this work is something that I'm genuinely proud of. I have to give a big shout out to Retire and the Gen 1 gurus that helped me with pulling this off, and I've included all the information in the description below. If you're interested in Gen 4 glitches and interesting things related to tweaking, check out his channel. He's working on some really interesting things down the road, so if you're not subscribed to him already, you're definitely missing out. Personally, I would recommend giving this a shot for the extremely simple ones like Totodile, just to say that you could do it, but if you're really interested in the crazier side with arbitrary code execution, the 8F glitch, and all the type changing, I've included a whole bunch of things in the description that will help you out with getting almost whatever you want. If you end up completing these yourself, tweet me your results at JohnstoneYT. Other than that, that's all there is to say about catching every Johto Pokemon and Pokemon Red and Blue. And that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing, as we'll be making more content like this very soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. If you're interested in watching me take on challenges live, I've been streaming a lot over my Twitch account, as well as upload highlights on my Johnstone Live channel that you can find in the description. Other than that, like thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.